Hi everybody. So far, we looked at how to find elements in the DOM and how to move around the DOM as if it were a, a series of ropes and ladders. Now, we're gonna go to the all important step of modifying elements in the DOM, which is a, a very important part of building the kind of dynamic, cool applications that you will undoubtedly be building very soon. So the thing to keep in mind is this. The DOM elements that we see in our page, they are objects, they're JavaScript objects, and they have some quirks, which we will get to as the right time approaches, but they allow you to do a lot of things that you could do in JavaScript as part of working with a regular piece of code. So here's an example. So on our HTML, let's say we have an image element, has a source attribute, has an alt attribute, some width and height, has all these things going for it. This HTML element, when it goes through a browser and it does its whole thing, it gets converted into a DOM object. And in the DOM object, you will see a tree-like structure that looks a little bit like this. And at this point, all the details that you might have had in the image tag in HTML is now abstracted away. You have a more generic image object. And then from that, you can use all the various JavaScript you know, accessors and tricks you have for being able to get more details about what's going on and also be able to modify and change what exactly this image is doing. Because in the DOM world, you have a direct mapping between what you see in the browser and what you can see in code and then modify from there. So the thing is, despite the similarities, the DOM was never designed to mimic the way objects work. And there are a lot of historical reasons for that, but the browsers each do their own thing. Right now we have a, a pretty good set of what we think is stable behavior, but it's not often formally spec'd or officially expected to keep working. And so I'll call some of those quirks out as part of looking at more advanced things. But for now, just keep in mind these handy properties and methods that we look at for modifying a DOM element. The first one is text content. A lot of our you know, DOM elements will have some text that they display, whether it is a part of what they show in initially or whether it's something that they have as like a, a virtual child element. You can modify the text inside of them and a text content property allows us to both read and set these values. Then we have the get attribute and set attribute methods. A large part of what we see in our markup when we look at a DOM element are attributes like your ID tags or sorry, your ID attribute or your class attribute or href, all these things, depending on the element you're in, you'll have a set of attributes that are very unique to that element. And then you have a way in JavaScript via the get attribute and set attribute methods of being able to modify them. And then the last two are all really about modifying a class value on the element because so much of what you'll probably end up doing is changing the classes applied to an element either for some functionality changes or more likely for changing the styling because your selectors might be relying on a class value that you want to toggle in real time based on something that's going on in your app. Now, we can talk more about it, but I feel the best way is to actually just get in there, write some code, and see how all of these things work. And so uh, to make this a little simpler, there's a code pen that you can use to go there, and you can see the URL on the in the presentation earlier. And so I'm not a fan of going to the browser to make some of these changes, especially for things where we can do things in a code editor. So I'm gonna go have the exact same markup and in my HTML file in VS Code, my code editor of choice, and you can use any code editor you want. And in this case, the contents of my VS Code content is being displayed in the browser in this page. And so if you look at this page overall, there really isn't a whole lot going on. We have a heading one element, an ID value of big message, and it displays the text, what's happening. And then we have an, 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 a link that links to croup.com and it just has a text go here. And you can see that maps to what you see in the browser, either in CodePen or in your own HTML page that you might be working with. All right, so now let's go ahead and start writing some code to modify some of the contents of our DOM and what we see here. So the first thing I wanna do is this. We have some text that says what's happening. I wanna change it, I wanna change it to say something else. So here we have our script region. And as you can imagine, the first thing we're gonna do when it comes to modifying a DOM element is get access to that element in code. And so for that, I'm gonna let heading element is name a variable. And I'm gonna use document.querySelector, one of the methods we saw earlier for being able to find elements in the page. And I'm just gonna use the syntax big message all right, so now heading element now has a reference to the big message h1 element. And so this variable is good. And now I wanna change the text that is being displayed here from what's happening to something else. And so I'm gonna do heading element. And we saw earlier, one of the properties that helps us 
make sense of the text that is being shown is text content. So I'm going to do text content and I'm going to date myself here heavily, but I'm going to use the words Oppa Gangnam style, which is pretty much the extent of how far my pop knowledge goes. So I'm going to go and save this page. Let's go ahead and see what this causes. I notice that when I refresh the page, Oppa Gangnam style is being displayed. Now the thing to keep in mind is that these changes that I'm being are making are being made dynamically at runtime. Nothing is changing in the markup itself because our source markup is still going to say what's happening. And you can kind of see this by looking at the comparison between view page source, where if you go to view page source and zoom in a bit, you can see that what's actually downloaded to the HTML file itself is the words what's happening, nothing too you know interesting going on there. But if I were to inspect the markup, you know, get a live version of the DOM, you can now see that if I see the content here, you'll see Oppa Gangnam style. It's what's currently being displayed. Let me zoom in much, much further so you have a much easier way of viewing what's going on. And that's one thing to keep in mind is that as part of modifying an element in JavaScript, we start creating what are known as dynamic elements or static elements with dynamic regions in them. And that makes it a little interesting from an accessibility point of view, which we'll talk about in a much later video. All right, we'll get text content. There's only more we can do as well. And so what I want to do next is change the URL that's currently being displayed here. And notice that we have an href attribute that has an URL point to https colon whack whack www.crupa.com. And so let's change it to say we go to Google instead. And so for this one, I'm going to create another variable and say let link equals document dot query selector. And notice that I don't really have an ID value or class value specified here. Um, that's okay. I'm just going to keep a very generic selector syntax. We just keep it just as a p element with an a specified there. In more complex situations, I would not do this. But for our example, I'm just going to keep it very simple. This is to show you that the query selector syntax is very flexible. And now I'm going to go ahead and change the contents of the href attribute right here. And so for that, we're going to use our handy set attribute method, set attribute. And set attribute takes two arguments. First argument is the name of the attribute itself, href. And the second argument is the value we want to set on it. So in this case, it's going to be HTTPS slash www.google.com. Why not? And I'm going to go ahead and set that the way it is. And this looks good. Let me go ahead and refresh the page. And let's see what happens. I refresh the page. And now when I click go here, notice that google.com is currently loading properly. And just for kicks, if you look at the markup, you can see at runtime, the value google.com is currently being displayed here. And similarly, you know, let's say, for example, I'm going to add a class, it's class summer, and I'm going to do, let's say, dot light, and I'm going to change the color to a very light gray, for example. Actually, color's a bad one. Let me set background color to a very light gray. And if I want to, I can now change the class value here to be something else. And so just for fun, I'm going to do heading element. We already have text content. I'm going to heading element that class name equals summer and light. So I'm just setting one more attribute just, just for fun and show you what happens here. I'm going to refresh the page. Notice once I do that, you can now see the gray background being applied to our heading text. And the point I want to highlight is that modifying the DOM is actually very, very straightforward once you get an idea of what element you want to target and then which property you really want to go after. Now, we only looked at a very small subset of the properties that are available. And you can just see from the autocomplete, there's a lot of elements and a lot of properties and methods that can be used to modify the elements in our DOM. We will get to many of them as part of going deeper into what we're doing. But for now, just for introduction, it seems like a good place to stop by just looking at text content, the get attribute and set attribute methods, and just one of the class properties. But we will look at modifying class values separately in a subsequent video because it is a very important part of how you will be modifying the DOM. In fact, might be the thing you'll be doing the most, especially as part of modifying the styling your page actually takes up. And so the, the last thing I just want to touch upon is that the reason why HTML elements are so versatile is because our DOM elements contain properties that do all these things, which we just saw. And the reason for this functionality, just like 
a lot of the object-oriented programming concepts you'll see applies totally to the DOM world as well, where you have at the very base layer, you have a node element, you have a node object, which then gets more specific into the element object. And then you have the HTML element with each layer of objects, adding their own set of properties and methods and special doodads. And then finally, you get to the point where every HTML element you might want to use is appropriately mapped to the existing object itself. So for example, the HTML anchor element would be what maps to the, the URL that we're modifying, the A tag that we're talking about. And then there's a heading element somewhere, title, text area element, any element that you'll be dealing with has its own appropriate object property. It has its own very specific methods and properties as well. So that's what allows you to maybe be able to do things on a sound element that you won't be able to do on a more generic element. Just little things like that that kind of you know tie together the world of HTML and the world of objects and what the DOM is kind of like capable of. So that's a very quick overview of all the things you can do in the DOM and all the things you can do using JavaScript to modify what gets shown there. In future videos, we're gonna use this as a jumping point to do a lot more interesting and cooler things. And eventually it's gonna to get to the point where it'll be second nature to you. Modifying the DOM will just be as simple as declaring a variable and just setting it to a particular value that you need to use later on. So if you found this video helpful and you have some questions, feel free to post in the forums at forum.crib.com where I and others will be very happy to help both answer your question and also you know, have a conversation with you on any topic relating to this that you might be interested in, which is often not always seen as a good thing in many online communities they have to post a question on. If you found this video sort of interesting, less interesting, very interesting, tell your friends and enemies all about it. And I think the knowledge about the DOM and how to modify it is something that everyone should know about. So please tell everyone. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that come along. Follow me at Karupa on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, GitHub, wherever at Karupa is going to be used. There's a very good chance it's probably me. And if you found this material in particular helpful, you can also access it in written textbook form. There's a physical book called JavaScript Absolute Beginner's Guide that contains this and a whole lot of other topics. And if you're not a physical book person, there's an ebook version as well. And as always, a lot of this content is available freely on the website at group.com itself. And you'll see a link in the description to the video to get to the free version of this content that you can look in your browser in your free time. So with that, I will see you all next time.